Sleeping up there is really pleasant. They advertise water beds as being so good because there are no pressure points. Well, in zero gravity, there are absolutely no pressure points. <laughs> and it's, uh, you can just close your eyes and drift off uh, very, very easily. Okay, well, Jack, fairly sharp on north of it. Guys on the ground. Going Pilots have to be able to land the space shuttle despite changes in their vestibular system. They may be confused about up and down and, and whether they're rotating or translating forward and backwards, so their inner ear may be uh, off. They can't fly as, as well by the seat of the pants because their seat feels different. And so there's a real adaptation when you get back down on the ground. You feel like you weigh about 300 pounds when you come back down and land. So you're gonna notice the guys moving a little bit sluggishly, a little bit heavily, particularly this flight where they're at the end of 14 days of being up there. We've had a few people that needed to be assisted. We've had a few people that needed to have some fluids administered. How close are we to an edge here? Uh, are we going to have problems? Personally, I was confident that I could egress myself. I, I wouldn't claim it would be pretty. In fact, it would may have been a stumble and fall and crawl and get back up and go again. But that's why we practice so much in the launch and entry suit. Well, my name is Robin Brack. Uh, I work in the crew escape uh, department. And what we do in crew escape is we take care of all the life support equipment that the astronauts need to fly in space. What we look for in the equipment is to make sure that everything that's in the suit mechanically is functioning properly. So if they had a rapid decompression, let's say, the suit would do its job, uh, save the crewman's life, um, and they would be able to survive. If an astronaut was getting ready for launch, the first thing he would do was he'd put on his diaper. This diaper is just like a Pampers diaper that a little kid would wear, except it's made for big adults. The next thing what he would do is put on his Patagonia underwear. It's a liquid-cooled underwear. Lay on your back on the floor with your feet above your head for five and a half hours when you're on the launch pad out there, and I guarantee you, in short order, you'll wish you were wearing a diaper if you have no other means of uh, relieving yourself. We pull on an a anti-G suit, and then over that comes the, the rest of the space suit, which is a, a pressure suit, essentially. We call it the pumpkin suit, right? It's uh, orange, and uh, uh, international orange for rescue, so they can find you if you ever had to bail out. Good. Okay. Sometimes you don't know what you're up against because everybody's got different personalities. But as far as a good reform, a good working relationship, there's you've got to have good chemistry. Uh, you know, there's no doubt about it. Okay, green apple. You got charged. You're saving somebody's life, and if something should happen, and. It's very important. Inside the parachute, besides the parachutes, our life raft and survival water and radios and everything you'd need to survive in the ocean, hopefully long enough for them to find you. And there are scenarios that you can paint where the shuttle uh, comes down intact uh, but can't make a landing strip. And uh, you essentially were writing the crew off in that case previously, but now uh, we have the option to at least uh, bail out. Feels super. Thanks. You're Look. not going to fly, huh? No, not tonight. Coward. Uh, I get to be part of the space business. Uh, I get to be with the astronauts, uh, which I'm very lucky. I wish I was an astronaut. <laughs>
Americans want humans in space. It is part of our psyche. One of the problems with manned spaceflight is as soon as you put people on a spacecraft, you change the mission and the purpose of the spacecraft. Its primary mission then becomes getting them back alive. There is no scientific uh, finding from the space program obtained by humans, including the return of uh, samples from the moon, that could not be obtained uh, more cheaply and more safely by robotic spacecraft. So uh, yes, I can understand the symbolic value of uh, sending humans uh, up into space, but uh, it is certainly not essential for science. Good evening and welcome to Mission Status Center. This is fantastic. He is floating. The United States has spent two-thirds of its space budget on manned spaceflight, and yet all of the real payoff from spaceflight has come from the unmanned vehicles, from the scientific satellites and probes, from the weather satellites, the communication satellites, the Earth resources satellites. So again, instead of the astronauts allowing us to do things in space that are exciting and helpful, the astronauts are a burden on the program. Isn't that impressive? We cannot have a program just with robots. In the end, the American public lives through the experience of the astronauts. The unmanned people, the scientists, uh, have hated uh, the shuttle and hate the space station and hate everything having to do with them because they say it amounts essentially to clowning around in orbit, uh, to high wire axe trapeze um, and that sort of stuff. And that in fact it is antithetical to science. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Shuttle's scientific perspective is extremely narrow and uh, I don't think it's too much to say more. I think you have to be a little careful when you listen to the scientists criticize the human spaceflight program because by and large those are the scientists that have grown up with robotic missions that don't require human presence. I mean, there's another whole set of scientists, material scientists, life sciences, uh, biomedical science that are eager to get on with shuttle experiments. The human brain is the best adaptive computer that I know of. There are things that robots could do and there are things that humans could do. There is the extension of human experience. We are explorers. It's written into our genetic code. But it's not. You keep going to the same dull place in which there is nothing and call it exploration. You degrade the currency of the word exploration. Whereas if we were going somewhere to some new world, then I think public uh, support could much more readily be sustained. <laughs>